So I've received a lot of requests to have a video explaining how, when you're practicing for the Certified Ethical Hacker exam, you can have a basic penetration testing lab for your use. Now if you go through AC Council and you go through their official courseware, and they do have an online lab that you can use for about six months as part of your subscription. Uh, but again, that's really expensive. It's a two to $3,000 for their courseware. If instead you decide to get your own book and you want to self-study, uh, you need something to practice on. Now, most of us don't have hundreds of extra computers laying around or even, you know, dozens or half a dozen or three or four for that matter. Most of us have a single machine. And so this basic uh, penetration testing lab I'm going to show you is very, very basic. Um, I'll show you a more complex one in a later video, but for this one, we're going to do a very basic one. And if you have a, a regular laptop that's within a year or two old, it'll probably be able to handle this lab fairly easily. And it'll give you the skills you need to be able to master the exam by being able to practice it. And, and get used to doing some penetration testing on your own. So what are our goals for this basic lab? Basically what I'm trying to do is provide you with an environment that you can safely practice your ethical hacking and penetration testing skills at home. You want to be able to utilize this with your existing hardware because you probably don't want to go out and buy a bunch of stuff because it's going to cost a bunch of money. And we don't want you to be able to compromise your own security so we want to make sure that this is all basically in a little box if you will to make sure that it's separated from your own machine. And what we're going to do here is we're going to create a virtualized environment. So we're going to minimize your cost, minimize your size, and your hardware requirements. So what do you really need to make this work? You need either a laptop or a desktop computer. Um, whatever your host operating system is, whether you're using Windows 8 or Windows 10, uh, if you're using some form of Linux or OS X, Macintosh, uh, any of those will work just fine for what I'm going to show you. Uh, you want to have a dual core or a quad core processor. The more cores, the better when doing virtualization. Uh, if you have at least a dual core, this basic lab will work just fine for you. If you're going to go into more of a complex one, then we're going to need to have a quad core processor. But for this one, we'll be able to do just fine with a dual core. You need about 100 gigabytes of hard disk space, and that's because we're going to create virtual images of other operating systems, and they are going to take up quite a bit of space. Um, as far as memory goes, 4 gigabytes is sufficient. Again, if you have more, that's always going to be better. Uh, 4 or 16 gigs is great. Um, if you have 8 or 16 gigs, that's going to be great. 4 is going to be the bare minimum you're going to want to do this with. And then you're also going to need an internet connection because we're going to be downloading software, and you have to have a way to download that software. Now, a lot of people ask, what do I use? Well, I use an old MacBook. I have a 2011, early 2011, uh, MacBook Pro laptop that I use. And it's running um, OS X um, El Capitan, the latest version. Uh, I have a 2.3 gigahertz processor. It's an i5 Intel dual core. Uh, so as you can see, it's not the speediest thing out there. Again, this it's 2016 right now. This is a five-year-old laptop at this point, and it's still running fine. Um, I have replaced my main operating system hard drive with an SSD, a solid state drive, uh, to boot the operating system. But all my virtual machines we're going to create, I'm going to put them on this secondary hard drive that I've put in there which is a 7200 RPM, uh, which is a medium speed hard drive, and it has 320 gigabytes is what the st storage size is, so it gives me lots of extra space. Now I've upgraded my MacBook to 16 gigabytes of RAM. That's not for this particular basic operating, uh, basic penetration lab, but when I do my complex lab, I run four or five or six virtual machines at a time, and so that RAM's essential for that. For what we're gonna do, we're gonna end up having three machines up at any given time, so four gigs will do fine for that. Uh, I have a wireless AC car that gives me a high internet speed, uh, and then if I plug in with my wired ethernet, I have a gigabit ethernet giving me a thousand megabits per second. So what am I going to create here? What we're going to do is we're going to create a single machine, as you can see in the bottom, that's going to be our host environment. For me, it's my MacBook Pro. Um, it, it's, we're going to use VirtualBox. You can use VMware just as well. Um, I actually do use VMware a lot. Uh, but because VirtualBox is free, that's what I'm going to show you in this video, so anyone who wants to can download that for free at virtualbox.org. Inside of that, we're going to create three virtualized machines. The first one, is, as you see on the right, is Kali Linux, and that's going to be our penetration testing environment. We're going to use that as our attacking machine to attack the other machines. In the middle I have there, I have Metasploitable 2, which is a spe spe special Linux version that has been created with vulnerabilities and holes. And it's good because it allows us to practice our technique against something that we know has vulnerabilities. And that makes our job a little easier when we're starting out at this basic level. The third thing we're going to use, um, I like to use Windows XP Service Pack 3. Now, a lot of people make fun of me for this because it's really old. 
But the reason I use it isn't because it's old, even though it's old and vulnerable, which is great for us as we're a beginning pen tester. Um, the real reason I like to use it is because it doesn't take much in the way of system requirements. Windows XP, its minimum system requirements is 64 megabytes of memory. Whereas if I throw a Windows 7, 8, or 10 on there, I'm going to suck up one gigabyte of your memory. And again, I said your minimum requirements here are only 4 gigs of RAM, so I'm trying to keep that low. We're going to give about a gigabyte of RAM to your Kali machine. We're going to give about 256 megabytes to the Metasploitable machine and 256 megabytes to your Windows XP machine, which means I'm going to be sucking up about 1.5 uh, gigabytes of your total system RAM for these three virtual machines, leaving you with two and a half gigabytes for your main system to operate, which will allow you to do things like have a web browser open and do some research and do some other stuff while running the host system and these three virtual machines. What we're going to do is we're going to create these three virtual machines. They're going to be on their own separate network, private network, not touching the internet, so that you can hack between them and hack at them um, without compromising the security of your main machine or getting you online. So this is our basic setup that we're going to do, and I'm going to show you as we step by step through it uh, in the next video how to install VirtualBox, and the video after that how to install Kali, video after that how to install Metasploitable, and the one after that will be how to install Windows XP, although if you want to use Windows 7, go right ahead. Um, as far as Windows XP goes, to get Windows XP up and running, you're going to have to go to eBay or Amazon or Newegg or an old computer and get an install disk for that. The other ones, Metasploitable and Collier and VirtualBox are all free downloads online. Just go and download them and you'll have all the software you need. If you don't have a copy of Windows XP, you can go to Microsoft and get Windows 10 or Windows 8 um, and get a free demo version that's good for 60 or 90 days to test it out and put it in your virtual machine to use. But again, for 10 or 15 bucks, I'd recommend getting an XP image because it's going to be a lot cheaper for you or a lot easier for you to start with and use a lot less resources on your system.